Hi, just let me share my screen super quick. And pull up my presentation. Okie dokie. Hi, my name is Ashley McIntosh, and I did research alongside of Dr. Michelle Falconez. And we did isolating bacterial antibiotic producers from soil. Quick introduction. Without more awareness and participation, antibiotic resistance will continue to be a global crisis. These antibiotics play a key role in most of our society, keeping bacterial diseases under control. Before antibiotics, the leading cause of death was bacterial diseases, and these were major diseases such as bubonic plague, typhoid fever, and pneumonia that wiped out millions. And once antibiotics were introduced, it saved millions of lives. But surprisingly, bacteria are mutating and adapting to antibiotics we are using faster than we are discovering new ones. This is occurring due to the overuse of antibiotics. And some examples of this can be found in livestock feeds. Farmers are feeding way too many antibiotics to their livestock and bacteria are becoming mutated to this. Also, prescriptions prescribed to patients and patients often, if they're feeling better, will not finish the prescription, which also can lead to antibiotic resistance. But one way to combat this is to screen for new antibiotic producing bacteria. And this is what Tiny Earth Project encompasses. It's this idea of screening soil samples in hopes of finding new antibiotic producing bacteria. For this project, it is hypothesized that antibiotic producing bacteria that have already been discovered will be found. So the first step to the project was to go and collect a soil sample. This was done behind Frick Hall at Cal U, and it was just done simply by using a plastic bag, like a sandwich baggie, and a handful of soils collected and then taken to the lab. Next, cereal dilutions were performed. And we performed cereal dilutions because initially bacteria in soil is extremely concentrated. And if you would plate, just the concentrated soil onto the plate, there would be way too many colonies in order to get a single colony or even be able to count any. So we dilute the bacteria in order to get countable colonies. And this is done just by taking nine milliliters of water and adding a gram of soil you mix it up and we'll call that tube A. And then in tube B, there's nine milliliters and you transfer one milliliter from tube A to tube B. And then you mix that up and then the rest of the tubes, C, D, E, F, G, all have nine milliliters of water. And you continue to transfer one milliliter of water containing the soil to the next in order to get your diluted solutions. So a total of five times one to the 10 serial dilutions were performed using the single soil sample. And the last four serial dilutions were plated, as you can see over here in figure one. And a CFU calculation was performed, which basically means colony forming unit calculation. So you want to find a plate with colonies between 30 and 300 colonies. So the 10 to the minus 5 plate was chosen, which is the third one from the left. And it had about 180 colonies. And this produced a CFU of 3 times 10 to the 6, which basically just tells you how much bacteria is in the soil. And this is actually low for an average bacterial content. Then next, the colonies found on the serial dilution plates, there were 12 unique colonies chosen and based on size, shape, color, and they were chosen and patched on to a master plate. And these 12 unique colonies 
Once grown, they were studied for their colony morphology, which basically looked at their texture, their shape, their elevation, their size, and as you can see, some are similar to each other, and then some are completely unique. But in order to further evaluate these bacterial colonies, we ran a selective and differential media test, and two different medias were used, the McConkie agar and the mannitol salt, were selected. The McConkie agar permits gram-negative bacterial growth only and does not allow gram-positive growth. It also shows if it ferments lactose or not. So if the media is, it's actually initially yellow, as you can see in A and C in figure three right here. If it turns red, it's lactose fermenting, if it turns the media red around it. And if the media remains clear or colorless, it does not ferment lactose. Then, so the mannitol salt agar, the MSA, which is found in B and D in figure three, it permits gram-positive growth, and it indicates whether it ferments mannitol. If it ferments mannitol, then the media will turn a very bright yellow, and if not, the media will stay a clear, colorless red. Some unique results came from this. Bacteria A had no growth on either plate, meaning it's at fault of us, the researchers. And this could be just due to an error plating the cells or the freezer, the cells were in the freezer way too long and they're no longer viable. For the mannitol salt agar, there was only one bacterium that was gram positive and that was colony two. The rest were gram negative, which would be colonies 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 9, 11, and 12. And uniquely about bacterium 1 is it also is gram negative, but it grew on both plates, which means it's a gram negative bacteria that is able to withstand high salt content, which is found on the MSA agar. And there was no bacterium that fermented mannitol. There was a slight yellow faint change on colonies one and two, but it was not bright enough to be considered a mannitol fermenting bacterium. Next, in order to further the search for antibiotic production, we plated all 12 of the unique colonies from the master plate found in figure two on three separate bacteria that are commonly found. And that was Staphylococcus epidermis, Bacillus aureus, and Pseudomonas organosa. And from these 12 colonies, there was only one antibiotic producer found and that was colony seven, which can be seen in figure four circled in these red circles. And you can tell it's an antibiotic producer because once it grows on the plate, it produces a halo around the bacterium, showing that it's producing antibiotics to fight off the bacteria that was initially on the plate. What's unique about it is, is it was able to grow on a gram negative and a gram positive bacterium, showing that it is a broad spectrum antibiotic where it is not specific to one bacterial cell type, cell wall type. Then the prevalence rate of the antibiotic producing bacteria in soil was calculated. We did this as a whole and for this project. The prevalence rate for the soil isolated from CalU as a whole for the class was 3.2%. And then for the master plate for this project was 8.33% because only one antibiotic producer was found out of 12. And overall, if I were to be able to continue this research, I would take colony seven, which was the antibiotic producer, and run more tests in order to find out exactly what bacteria it is in order to see if it's a new unique bacteria that produces antibiotic or if it's one that's already been discovered. And overall, if more people were able to jump on this project, the antibiotic crisis would be and could be solved. Uh, just from this project alone, we found 3.2 
4% of bacteria that produce antibiotics. So imagine if many people from all over the world started collecting soil samples with bacterial bacteria species that produce antibiotics we could find unique antibiotic producers and be able to keep up with these mutating bacteria. Thank you.